This is Lonely RS, my maxed Iron Man. I maxed this account nearly four years ago and hunted tons of boss items along the way. But since then, things have changed. The collection log exists and so does tons of new content that this account hasn't even touched yet. The goal is simple. I want to complete the entirety of Old School RuneScape. This means filling in as many slots on the collection log as I can, as well as doing tons of content that most people don't even think about. Welcome to Iron Completionist. You know, between breaking the next dry streak and then breaking the multiple year-long Tebow dry streak, it really feels like Jagex likes me a lot lately. And when they reached out to me about sponsoring this video, I knew I could finally confirm what we've always thought. Content creators get boosted RNG. No, for real though, I'm insanely excited to say that this video is actually sponsored by Jagex, and I'm contractually obligated, not really, to say that content creator RNG isn't real. That was the line, right? I, I, still get the, I still get the boosted RNG? All right, cool. If you guys remember back in December, the old school team streamed the Winter Summit with some huge announcements like Desert Treasure 2. Well, now it's time for the old school RuneScape Summer Summit live stream. On August 19th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK time, the OSRS official Twitch channel is going to be hosting their Summer Summit stream to talk about all of the big projects they have in store for the rest of the year, as well as early into 2024. Every time one of these streams happens, I'm insanely excited for what new content I'll get to experience, especially now that I have boosted content creator RNG. Oh, cut that part out? All right, I'll do that in post. So make sure you guys join me and tons of other players on the official Old School RuneScape Twitch page on August 19th to hear about all the crazy things they have in store for us this year, and a massive shout out to Jagex for sponsoring this video. So we ended the last episode off doing some Wilderness Slayer. You might be wondering, why am I so dead set on doing Wilderness Slayer? Well, to be frank, it's kind of because I really, really want to get the Void Waker. I'm still missing the piece from Callisto and the piece from Vedian. And I figured a good way to do this is just to continue to do Wildy Slayer to get these bosses done on task, and also because it gives me a good opportunity to continue working on Rev Tasks, since I am still missing two items from there as well. And to the uninitiated, I am still missing the Thamron Scepter, and weirdly enough, the Amulet of Avarice. So I want to start this one off by continuing to do Wildy Slayer. I'm close to a 250 task streak here, also what a fantastic way to start. Back to back Rev Task. I think after I hit that 250 streak, I'm probably going to start doing the generic Turiel skipping and reset my Wildy streak, but we'll get there eventually. Well, there's the first uh, quote quote rare drop of this task and video. Some U seeds. Alright, task done. Unfortunately, no other big rolls there. Another really big benefit of doing all these revs is that you get a ton of alkables from here, as well as the totems that just give gold, so... Maybe that 500 mil bank tab isn't as unrealistic as people said it would be. Hey, there's an elite clue scroll. Probably, you know, aside from the Void Waker, the most exciting thing I can really get on this task, so I will absolutely take it. Bear task done. I'm going to keep calling it RTO, even though you guys corrected me last time, because I just like the way it sounds. I also want to keep trying to work on group content where I can, and TOA is just something that I really prefer doing in groups. So, I found a group. Let's do a couple kills. Oh, oh no! I'm sorry, gets. <laughs> That's my third one. Pain forgets. 71 spiders. Now, even though I don't need the Void Waker piece from here, I am only missing, I believe, the ring before this boss is fully green logged. So, again, I might as well do it on task, it'll be a little faster. And I think this is actually my favorite of all the wieldy bosses, to be honest. Task done, no ring. Back to Revenants. Uneventful. Hey, one skip in between, we got another rev task. Another hit on the rare drop table, magic seeds, four of them. Yo! There we go, that's a new item right there, the Amulet of Avarice. Very nice, I was just saying, we needed to hit a roll on the table, and there we go, we just did. Fantastic to see it. Now the only thing we are missing here is the Thamaron Scepter. Now the unfortunate thing about getting an Avarice on an iron is that, unlike a main... I can't really just go around using this and risking it, because if I die, I lose the only one that I have. So, I'm probably just going to have it sit in my bank for forever, but it'll be useful because I can just put it on in the bank, refresh my skull, and I don't have to go to Edgeville to refresh it, so I guess technically it's a bit of a time saver. For real though, it is pretty crazy that we went from insanely unlucky here, and then that update came out, and now, 
we just need one more rev weapon to green this log. And once we're done with revenants, we technically don't really need Wildy Slayer anymore. So that'd be pretty nice. Whoa, you should go click that below the video. Back to spiders, regretting going for the 250 streak here though, because I think it's effectively losing me points instead of Turio skipping, but I'm too committed. Couple of bold tips. Hey, 500 KC and a dragon pickaxe to boot. That's just the perfect time to get one, and oh my god, they are so cheap now. 1.4 mil? By the time this video comes out, they're probably going to be sub 1 mil, to be honest with you. But like, Jesus, man, these were like 7 mil, uh, like a month or two before this update came out, which I guess at this point was actually quite a while ago, but still, wow. Well, 500 KC and a dragon pick. Very nice. Two for one clip. Elite Clue Scroll and 35 Onyx Bolt Tips in one drop. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, more Bolt Tips, let's go. Task done, let's see what's next. And just like that, task number 250 is Revenants. And the nice thing is now that I'm at 250, or I will be after this task, I can use Turiel Skipping because this will just be way faster, I don't have to waste Slayer Points Skipping, and it only resets my Wildy Streak, which I won't care about resetting after I hit 250. Alright, well I forgot to turn my replay buffer on, but... 2 mil statue, as you see in the chat. Another hit on the table, some more U seeds. Alright, there's the task done. Also, I know it doesn't seem like it because I'm kind of speeding through these clips, but you guys can probably tell this video does already have a good amount of progress in it. So make sure you guys are leaving a like and a comment. It really does help the algorithm recommend my videos. Funny thing is, Turiel can actually assign like bears and spiders too, so 28 spiders task is just a quick few trips at Spindle. 60 snaps, that's always a good drop to see. Alright, Crystalia, I'll go back to the bear. Now, as you guys can imagine, doing all these tasks in the wilderness with wildy weapons, and then dying a lot at revs that you guys don't see, uses a lot of ether. And I'm down to 10,000, so it's finally time to break down some of these nearly 1,400 bracelets of ethereum that I have up here. And these break down into, I think, 250 each, I'm pretty sure. So, this is gonna take a minute, and I'm gonna make this left-click dismantle so I can just you know, spam click them and hold one. This is actually not too bad. This is why I never out them. It's for this exact reason. Plus, if future Willy content comes out, it'll be nice to have the ether stored up. Actually, uh, forgot this was even a draw from here, but that's a dragon two-handed sword. Pretty sure that one's fairly rare, but honestly, I don't really care. It's a drop. It's cool. Let's test on an RTO once again. I think I'm going to start just bring my main out here and attacking whoever's on the world because there are so many bots and I think that's really the only way to free up a world. But, you know, a couple of elite clues, Dragon 2H, nothing crazy. Alright, so I made a minor mistake. I forgot that because Turiel still boosts my non-Wildy Slayer task streak, I'm still supposed to be coming to Konar or Durdel for every 10th and 50th task, so I had to skip what I just had. And Worms is actually something I should do because I'm still missing the Dragon Harpoon. So... You'll see a couple of normal Slayer tasks mixed in here, because that's why this is so nice. You just get a bunch of Slayer points. Skeleton task, go to Vedian, get 100 Renars. Easy clap. <laughs> Last skill of task. We get ourselves a Ring of the Gods. Wow. So, in 7 kills, I got 100 Renar reads and a Ring of the Gods. See, that's why I told you, just poking and prodded at this boss is definitely worth it. Unfortunately, that is not a new collection log slot, and we already have that one. In fact, I think that's my third Ring of the Gods now, and we are still missing the one from Venonatus. So we are getting the right items from the wrong boss, unfortunately. But hey, I'll still take it. Man, this thing used to be like 30 mil, now it's four. That's crazy. Back to Revenants we go. Hopefully we get that scepter. Nope, just PTSD from all the PKers. All right, Christelia, I understand you really want me to go for that Void Waker. I, you know, no complaints. All right, well, I just tried something that I'm never going to do again until the proposed changes get pulled and go through. Uh, I tried doing Big Callisto instead of the singles version, and it's terrible. There's an insane amount of chip damage. It's just bad. It's just, yeah, not worth doing. Back to singles version. All right, had to crash a bot, but got an elite the first kill of the task. We take that. That is 800 RTO KC now. Still going hard, you know, just trying to trying to get that, that Void Waker piece. But yeah, each one of these wildy tasks, even though I'm speeding through them, does actually take a couple of hours. And then the process of Turiel skipping to get a task usually takes like 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your RNG. So it's not exactly a fast process, but I actually do pretty much like all of these wildy bosses. They're just engaging enough. Though I do have to say, Bear is definitely my least favorite. I've been like clicking through the collection log, you know, I'm at this point where it's like, 
missing a couple items here, a couple items here, a couple items here. And it's just kind of... I'm trying to find the motivation to find something that I really want to do since the wilderness is just really full of bots right now. And I'm hoping that I can play at a time where it's not that bad. So I've been looking around and I'm thinking Phantom Muspa have not given this boss a lot of time. And I am really not very good at it. Again, haven't given the boss a lot of time. But I haven't actually been back there since I got the Tebow a little while ago. Which, I don't know, actually maybe for you guys it's like last episode. I don't even know at this point. But... I kind of want to start working on getting a Venator Bow. Now, the Venator Bow isn't like the most amazing weapon in the game or anything, but it is actually really good for AFKing Slayer and potentially AFKing Jellies for Hard Clue Scrolls, which might be a decent option in the future. So, I'm going to need the Imbued Heart at some point as well. It's great for that grind. Let's just send a few Muspa kills. Maybe uh, actually get our first shard. I've never done Tebow only here, so. Maybe it's good, maybe it's terrible, I'm not quite sure, but I guess I'll do a few kills and let you guys know how it feels. I'm obviously using Amethyst arrows here, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use my Dragon arrows here. I've been using those at raids, but uh, it's not feeling justifiable here. Do still have 81,000 Amethyst arrows though, so I think we'll be fine for a while. Oh hey, look at that, that's a Master Combat task, I was wondering what happened there. Uh, that is five more points for the future whenever I come back to that. And a new PB of 158. Felt like a pretty good kill. We're at 70 KC now as well. I've done a few kills since coming back. I uh, forgot my thralls on the first trip though, so that's probably why I got the PB on this one. Oh hey, another frozen cache. Anything actually good in this this time, or is it just still... It's just Ancient Essence again. What's the point? It replaces the Ancient Essence drop, and it just gives me Ancient Essence. I don't understand the purpose of this drop. At least take our Elite Clues around here. Well, first things first, I'm going to do this Elite Clue. But when I go back, I think I'm just going to switch to Ancients and just do this Phantom Muspa Manipulator task. Uh, I, I feel like Thralls is probably the better play for speed. But in terms of going for this, having Freezes seems like it would make it really, really easy. So I'm going to try and do that. And then I figure if I have Thralls, I might eventually, if I get lucky, get this Phantom Muspa Speedrunner task. But this is probably one that borderline requires staff or just insane rng i would imagine well i got another ancient icon but i messed up the grandmaster task right at the end it's actually harder than i thought it'd be surprisingly i thought this one would be really simple a better count yes oh that took so many more tries than i thought it would but phantom must have manipulated the grandmaster task done that was i expected that to be really easy uh, it was not. It is a Grandmaster task for a reason, and I will own that. I made so many mistakes, like, right at the end of the kill. That might just be because I'm inexperienced at this boss, to be honest. That that probably is very likely the reason why. But, uh, still, I'll take it. Very nice. Now we can go back to just killing it normally. Alright, well, there is 100 KC here at the Phantom Muspa, which I believe is the drop rate for a Venator Shard. So, seems like we're on just a little bit of a dry spell at quite a few places right now. Hopefully... That does not last. We need five of them, though, so chances are the RNG will balance out by the time we get all five. All right, so after a while, I made my way back to the wilderness to finish off this bear's task. I think Muspa is going to be, like, my go-to option right now for when I don't have teams and want to PVM outside of the wilderness because it's too crowded. But finishing off the task with some Toad Flax, we take that. All right, back to Revenants. Hopefully, this is the task. Turns out, it was not the task. A little bit of Eddian. Kind of pointless to do this on skeleton tasks, but it's just an excuse to go up there while I'm doing Wildy Slayer, I guess. Oh, that's one of the drops I actually really wanted to see right there. 450 Mortmeyer Fungus. It's not like Mortmeyer Fungus is particularly difficult to collect, but similar to just farming, I just don't like doing it. So getting it passively from this boss is so nice. Yo, <laughs> there's a new item. The skull of vet. Is that seriously only worth 100k? <laughs> oh my god, is that seriously 100k? Oh my god, what? That's ridiculous. Bro, the Mortmire fungus is worth as much as the skull of Vetian. That's so fucking funny. Oh, I love that. All right, well, skull of Vetian officially means I actually have all of the wilderness weapon upgrades now. Very happy we finally got another item. It's been a minute since I've had a collection log slot here, but uh, if we go down to the Vedian slot, you see now all we're missing is the Void Waker piece and the pet, much like Callisto and Artio. And then from Venonatus, we're just missing the ring. So we're making some serious progress on this Wildy log. 
but that was the third wilderness weapon upgrade. Unfortunately for me though, I don't know why I closed the collection log there and I have to go right back into it, I do still need the Thamron Scepter, it's the last item that I need from Revenants. I don't actually know if there's a whole lot of use to this thing, uh, when it's, you know, when it's upgraded with Thamron Scepter, but I guess when we get the Thamron Scepter, I can find out. Either way, that's fantastic, and has just kind of been done passively, so that's pretty sick. Oof, 20 Sand Fuse, that's a fucking nice drop. More Dragon Bones, man, I'm rolling in the Dragon Bones here. Big Vedian loot is insane, by the way. It's definitely worth doing this over the little one, especially if you just stick a scout outside. I mean, like, I die just as much here as at the singles version, but I just get, like, eight times the loot. A little bit of smoke devil action for our bonus task. You know what I'm about to say. You know, back to revs, here we go, blah, blah, blah. There's another ancient crystal that's, like, my 15th one or something at this point. I don't even know. Finishing with a double dragon plate skirt drop. And back to Venatus and Spindle for the ring hunt. Able tips, we take those. Clue, you love to see it. Another elite, wow. Just got back after doing the other one. And there's a dragon two-hander as well. More bolts, more bolts. Many spiders dead, no ring. All right, I guess she really doesn't like spiders, so we're going right back. 700 KC, baby, still grinding. This boss spits out elites like it's no one's business. It's insane. More bolts. Oof, snaps, that's a good one. Bolts, snaps, let's go. Dragon 2H and Alaren's Key, that's a pretty interesting kill. Alright, there's the task done, and that does officially, I believe, push us past the drop rate for the ring from Spindle specifically. Obviously, we've also killed a lot of Venata, so we've already been past the rate, but uh, I still like the boss, but I'd also like the green log. Time for some Vedian, though. 27 Fuse, nothing super exciting there. All right, 157 Hydras for my next 10th uh, task. And actually, it seems like a really good place to, you know, be the last Slayer task I do for a while. I'm kind of tempted to actually go and kill some actual Hydra. I am missing just the Jar and the Pet from here, but I could actually still use the GP for unlocking that last bank slot. And also, like, uh, it kind of seems like a decent place to try out the Twisted Bow, because I haven't really had too much of an opportunity to do that yet, so... actually have a weird amount of motivation to kill the Hydra boss right now. Also, I guess if I get freakishly lucky, the Alchemical Speedrunner task could probably happen. I don't think so, though, because I'm probably taking Alks over Thralls here, just for longer trips. I'm not sure yet, we'll feel it out. Hey, 134, a new PB, and a Hydra's Heart on that as well. I can't remember if that's the last piece you need. Mega Brimstone Ring? It's been a while. But hey, look at that, double clip. We can definitely get a 130, especially if I bring Thralls. It's just going to take like a little bit of good RNG, but Tebow is 100% going to give me this Grandmaster task. I have no idea how you do it without it, though. Hey, that actually is the last piece of the ring, so I can go ahead and make myself another Brimstone Ring actually curious because I think the collection log did exist when I was doing this grind originally and that is brimstone ring number eight on the account you can probably see why originally this grind made me quit my iron man but uh now that I have a tebow it doesn't feel as bad 133 decided to take out the thralls I'm gonna try these for a little bit until I get that grandmaster time but it definitely feels doable if I swap the dragon arrows it'd probably be even better but if I can get this with amethyst I might as well get it with Amethyst and save all the dragon arrows that I'd lose otherwise. 128. Oh, wait, is it sub 120, not sub 130? Oh my god, I thought it was sub 130 this whole freaking time, and it's sub 120. You've got to be kidding me. 126. Fuck. 2200 KC, though. That has to be it. Surely. Surely that's the sub 120. Yes. It is exactly on the mark. 120. There is the Alchemical Speedrunner. Uh, Grandmaster task, done. I am so glad I did that. I brought the claws out, I brought the full bandos and melee switch and everything for this, man. Now that that's done, though, I can actually swap back to my normal gear because I don't want to be using dragon arrows here, and I really don't want to be doing all these crazy switches, and I can switch back to my, my chill boots and my chill rings, so I have way more prayer bonus. But that is a huge aspect of completionism right there, because if we go over to this section, and not Abyssal Sire, that's not right, and go to Alchemical Hydra, I now have all of the Alchemical Hydra tasks completed. This Tebow is going to help with a lot of these speedrunner tasks, and uh, it's nice. It's just nice, too, because this way 
I'm giving myself a little bit of a buffer, so whenever new combat tasks come out, which, you know, they're likely to at some point in the future, I'm probably not going to end up losing my Master Diaries, so that's kind of nice as well. So it's been a long time since I've done an entire task at the Alchemical Hydra boss, and it's probably going to be a long time before I ever do it again, because that was draining. That was like an 8-10 to 10 hour task or something ridiculous, even with the speed of the Tebow, because I had to spend a lot of time banking and risking and dying going for that Grandmaster task. I think so far this video, I've probably done like 50 or 60 hours of Slayer at least, so I think I want to mix it up and do something else to round this video out. So I was scrolling around in my collection log, and I think what I want to do is actually go back to the Phantom Muspa and see if we can get ourselves a Venator Shard. But before I do that, I'm going to go and just kind of relax a little bit. I think I'm going to do like some minigame, something or other, something fairly AFK. Also, as you can see, I'm still trying to get the... Bottomless compost bucket from Hisporia. I've been neglecting it for a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> 78 KC. Still no bucket. Love that. Well, I said I wanted to take a little break and do something different, so I came back over here to Trouble Brewing, and I'm going to pick up my next collection log slot, which is the Gilded Smile Flag. I might have enough for another one right now, but I don't really want to buy another one right now. And again, just to prove a point here, you can't sell these back. I just tried to use it on a tree. I don't know why I tried to use it on a tree, but as you can see, look, nothing interesting happens. Okay, let's try trading him. Let's see if I can sell it back this way. Wow, you can't sell this item. Please. Stop. Stop. You guys make me second guess myself every time I play this minigame. You cannot sell these back. I don't know why some minigames you can and some you can't, but unfortunately, in this one, you can't. Hey, there's another ancient icon, as well as 55 grimy toad flags, which is honestly more important. I don't know if I'll ever use these for anything, but, uh sure that at some point I might need to use a staff in the wilderness and maybe being able to kind of throw these away will do something. New PB there, uh, 147. Still nowhere near the GM time though. I'm pretty sure it's like 130 or 120. Kind of think I either need disgusting RNG or probably a shadow to get that. Hey, there we go. Finally seeing a, well, I shouldn't really say finally, we're not insanely dry, but seeing our first Venator, Venator Shard. So we need four more, and that first one, of course, is also a collection log slot. So that's very, very cool. 161 KC, Venator Shard number one. There's another ancient icon. I'll take another 60k, I guess. Why not? That's pretty nice. I got a hard kill in the last kill, got an elite on this kill. Okay. What is that drop? Dragon Plate Guard 2, Dragon Plate Legs. What the hell? That's insane. All right, there is 199 Muspa KC, and I'm going to stop right here just to trigger everybody's OCD that I did not get 200 KC. I actually tried doing some kills with Mage and range, like with swapping, and I'm going to be honest, it actually felt like substantially worse than using just the Tebow. Like, sure, sometimes my Tebow kills are pretty slow, but this is like way more effort. I get way less inventory space to not really even save any time. So I think I'm just gonna stick with Tebow only whenever I'm doing Muspa. That just feels like it makes more sense. Now I've been doing a lot of Slayer and a lot of bossing this video. So I wanna take a break and head back to another mini game thing. I know it did a little trouble brewing, but I think I wanna get like one more item and I wanna go for something guaranteed. So I know it's just a time investment item. So I think I'm gonna either get an item from Mage Training Arena or Mahogany Homes. I'm not really sure which one yet, but I'll figure it out and I guess I'll get back to you guys when I decide. All right, I think I'm gonna go for the Master Wand. Now this item is a little bit rough for me because as you guys already know, I have a Kodai already. So it's everything in Mage Training Arena in terms of the wands, the Mage Book, I've already actually had before, but I do already have the Teacher Wand. So the Master Wand is actually not gonna be that terrible of a grind. I'm not sure how many hours it's gonna be, but again, it's a guaranteed slot. Just have to dedicate some time, so. Let's head over to Mage Training Arena and uh, let's get that done. All right, easiest room out of the way. This one was actually so nice and chill now. I actually just did it while I was eating dinner, so easy clap. Well, this room used to be my least favorite, but it's actually not too bad now. That's 240 telekinetic points. Now it's time for the two that I really, really don't like. So I'm going to do Graveyard next and save the worst for last, which is Alchemy. All right, shout out Runelite plugins to make this room a lot better. There is the graveyard room done. Actually, not as bad as I remember. Substantially faster than telekinetic. And now all that's left is everybody's favorite room, alchemy. All right, there we go. That is 800 more, or not 800, that is 80 more points. 
in the alchemy room. I don't know why my screen is flashing. Your guess is as good as mine. But unless I was wrong, which I really hope that I wasn't, I should be able to just go up here and claim my master wand. So let's go ahead and see. Actually, do I need to have the other wand with me? I might. Yeah, I need to go get the other wand. Hey, I'll be right back. All right, take two and master wand in the collection log. The second master wand on the account. Pain. What is this thing even worth these days? 2.8 mil? That's so cheap. There must be tons of bots. I guess there's a lot of other options to use now as well, but... Hey, I'll take it. It's another log slot. We did get a couple in this video, but again, like I've been saying a lot lately, we're kind of just at that point in the game where three to five collection log slots is actually a fantastic video. So I'm really, really happy with that. We got a couple of really cool items, and I feel like this is a great place to wrap it up. So I will see you guys next time. As always, subscribe if you enjoyed, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace out.